So today is about giving you an update on what's happening with the Triangle Master Plan, um, where Craven District Council have got a lump of money. I'm going to be David Smirthwaite for that presentation because unfortunately David has been on holiday in France and the part of France he was on holiday with before he left wasn't under any lockdown, got in lockdown while he was there. So he's having to go into two weeks quarantine starting today. Um, so we lose David. Um, Rob Atkins is stuck in Bradford because of Bradford's lockdown, but we're going to be able to Zoom with Rod Atkins a little bit later on. And Ivan Lou is going to do a presentation for us on the sustainability goals. So, so this is how we're going to accommodate what will happen today. So I will com in, commence talking about the Skipton Triangle Master Plan, unless anybody's got anything to ask me at this stage. No? Cool. Okay. So let me turn that off or it's going to annoy us to pieces. Okay, so I'm doing quite a bit of reading on this because as you can appreciate, this was a last minute substitution. Um, but basically from the Skipton Triangle Master Plan, if you want to get the, that's the one. So fundamentally, that's the area, um, hence the term of the triangle that's actually going to be involved in this. And basically what's going to happen is it's promoting the creation of high quality places spaces and buildings on a scale that suits Skipton, um, enhancing the experience of people coming to town. Um, it's going to settle um, out the layout and using the land mixture of everything that you see in that triangle really. So the two main projects split then from the triangle that covers the whole thing into those two sections. Um, so as, as I go on, hopefully it'll become a bit clearer. Um, so it's all about new developments that are going to create fresh roads. They're literally going to lay some fresh roads down. The idea of that being that a lot of our businesses, especially the ones that need to have the, the lorries, the, the bigger trucks, um, they can't get under the bridges. So for years, they've been having to go down Harrogate Road, down the high street, and technically there's a 7.5 tonnage restriction on the high street, but for years we've been breaking that protocol through necessity because these trucks won't go under. So this is going to create a better flow in and out of the town. Um, we will have more cohesive information on where exactly that's going to be. Um, the architects that have been engaged won the tender uh, for the project um, have got some great ideas. They've got a great pedigree uh, for, for dealing out these sort of economical restructures in towns. The place it's going to affect the most um, initially is going to be the train station from an overhaul point of view. Now, I don't know about you, but I think our train station has been in need of a, a relook, a relaunch, um, making it a little bit better than it is. Perhaps, and I emphasize the word perhaps, perhaps putting some little tiny um, businesses in there. Um, that, that can take advantage of the, the footfall traffic coming and going, perhaps get some art and culture murals done so that it makes it a more welcoming space to actually arrive in. Um, that would be quite good. Um, there's been talk about perhaps we could even consider relocating the bus station to the train station because there is enough land to be able to do that. Um, I know that at one of the meetings I attended where David very eloquently explained all this, somebody had said, well, it's really convenient to catch a bus there. That doesn't stop bus routes still meandering round where you need them to meander. And that brings in a really important point from my point of view. I think the idea of the buses meandering a little bit more might be good because then people on the buses will see everything off the high street um, because I have got a lot of my great independent shops for Skipton that are in those little nooks and crannies that are in themselves very attractive for people to come and visit and shop at. Um, so there's some great possibilities if we all engage and have a good conversation on, on how this may evolve. Um, so it'll ultimately end up enhancing the value of the assets um, and settling um, setting a conservation area for Skipton as well. So there's some really good things when it comes to the environment side of it with everything that can be achieved here. Um, and from an economic and social perspective, um, it 
can also enhance a skipton. So if we do end up, and I emphasise the word if, if we do end up with um, some extra little business units in the train station area, for example, I think it would be nice if more things are happening a little bit outside of the, the centre, um, you know, just to encourage people, because we do have some great businesses in different little nooks and crannies. Um, so, as I've said, the main focus on the Skipton Railway Station, um, employment that it's going to bring, hopefully, uh, that's another sort of situation. I don't know much about how the employment side of things will roll out. Um, if anybody has any questions on that, if you want to email me with them, and I'll pass them on to David as the expert, and we'll get an answer back from that, because I really don't know how the um, employment side of it will be benefited, impacted. Um, I think it's more to do with the benefit than an impact. Um, so just coming to the SK140 site, um, that extends 5.6 hectares um, in, in central on the Skipton Railway Station. The south area incorporates Sandyland Business Centre, Carlton New Road, while the north boundary is by the Leeds Liverpool Canal, so all of that will be affected by this. The eastern extremity includes the fire station and it also includes the former LMS social club. That land is still there waiting to be fully utilised, so it will encapture that and sort something exciting out on that. So that's sort of the SK140 bit. The other part, the smaller bit, the SK139, consists of two main areas of land, east and west of Cavendish Street, which together extend 1.95 hectares. Um, to, the to the east, the area is predominantly owned already by Craven District Council, so that makes things a little bit easier when they're already um, owning that. Um, and it's used as a public park with mixed use units, including retail and leisure. Uh, to the west of Cavendish Street um, is also incorporated, and the site is occupied by a single large floor, floor, get my teeth in, floor plate store and associated car parking, which we know if we know that sort of side of it. So that area is up for significant redevelopment. Well, both the areas are, obviously. But that gives you an idea of, of what it'll actually have. The heritage impact assessment prepared um, by the Craven Local Plan concluded that the redevelopment of the area had the potential to deliver very beneficial impacts on the character and the appearance of the Skipton Conservation Area. Uh, and again, sadly, I don't have much more at this stage other than to let you know um, that this is going to be massive from, from a heritage point of view, from a benefit of what Skipton will then re-look like, the businesses that are already in that area um, and the new business that it can attract. Um, that's about as much as I've actually got um, on it at this stage. Um, questions like I say are best actually answered via email so that I can get you the answers you actually need and my apologies for David not being here and me having to be David in this moment but does anybody have anything I might be able to answer any questions that so no you don't know roughly what you'd be putting in like Cavendish Street car park all those things are to be dis decided um, at the moment I'm reading off the tender yeah, yeah. document yeah, yeah. Um, and then when the architects come in, they know they've got to do business engagement. They know they've got to go around. They know they've got to chat, especially by the businesses who are already in that area and will be affected, but also the businesses that will benefit by it. Uh, Rachel Fryers, for example, has, from Merritt and Fryers, has joined the bid board. Um, and part of her excitement of joining the bid board was so that she could have a, a say on things like this and be at the first stages of them. Because uh, Rachel is one of those businesses with the big trucks that get affected by the railway bridges um, and has had fun and games during the high street closure on market days. But all that's been accommodated thanks to working together. Um, yeah, anything else? When do you think the commuter start? Do you start? Imminently, uh, basically. Um, it's because the tender's been given, um, I believe COVID 19 slowed it down a bit, didn't it? I think it might have been kicking off by now if we hadn't have had the delay of COVID-19 but the point is the tender's gone out the architects have been chosen we're now trying to educate everybody to be aware of things like Skipton master plan Skipton triangle um, if you hear Liz talking about the golden triangle this is what we mean because she keeps saying that don't you love? Um, so anything like that you just need to be aware and, and chipping in even if your business isn't necessarily in that area um, you know pop along to meetings that are going to be 
displayed if you've got an interest you might just be saying the one significant thing that will will make a difference somewhere and this is really what I'm all about I mean bid itself stands for business improvement district this new term of the bid that we're in I really want us to be able to make a difference that the businesses really really feel that the bid have had a positive impact on where they are with everything um, and embracing that business improvement district just those three words and this has the capacity to, to be able to do that. So, yes. Okay, so if they're um, doing away with that car park on Cavendish Street, is there going to be other car parking introduced? Yes, um, if they're doing away with it. And that's the key word, if. Um, at this moment, um, basically, nothing's taboo. Um, everything's available for discussion. You know, they may not relocate the bus station. Personally, I, have, I love the idea of a sort of travel hub uh, that you can sort of go to and coordinate things there. Um, and then I really like the idea of that space being made available uh, for something leisurely, perhaps, a place where people can actually go and gather in the town and genuinely sit there with some takeout or, or just thinking about the next place they're going to go to. So the possibilities, I think, are quite exciting. The ifs and the maybes, yeah. Yes? Quickly, it goes back to car parking, um, which where Skipton's located graphically. Um, most of our visitors come by car because there's not suitable um, public services. The trains only come from Yorkshire, they don't come from Lancashire at this minute in time, and everything. Um, and I'm sort of quite concerned about the car park situation, unless forward thinking puts car parking in elsewhere with good links into town. Um, because if you don't do that, then people won't be, first, you won't be able to get into town to use these facilities. Um, it's what I call joined up thinking. Yes. There's sort of certain things don't do that. Um, and so we'll end up spending all this money um, and actually then both won't be able to get into town. And we'll use Cameron Street Car Park now. I would say 80% of it is Monday to Friday is used by the workers of Bellevue Mill and surrounding things. And I think that's their comment. There's only about six cars in there on a Saturday morning at half past nine, but then there's eight percent full at least on a Monday to Friday at half past nine. Yeah. And so if you do away with that, you are going to displace all them round the streets of the town. It's not necessarily doing away with it. It's no. thinking through what the alternatives, and this is another reason why I want this business engagement. Um, yeah. And the other side is, you know, we can go down. We might not want um, three-storey car parks put in Skipton from a heritage point of view of how ugly that might look. But there's no reason why you can't go down so that the third storey is the underground story and then you're only two stories high but you've still managed a three-story car park it's because possible if you do that then you concentrate all the parking in one place and really it'd be better just putting a deck on each car park so coach street car park would accept a deck um, and you wouldn't see it because it's in a bit of a bowl this is where the architect comes in in this is this is the questions for the architect because i'm saying the possibilities of going down for the first floor those are just meetings I've been at oh, yeah. where they've said there's possibilities. Um, I just think the, the car parking issue needs to be sorted before one It's definitely a heavy consideration, but there's also a park and ride, of course. If, if we set a proper park and ride system oh, I, up, I, I, I agree. Um, then, you know, maybe well, we can have more right, space in Skipton. Yeah. We start building on anything else and things. Yeah, I mean the roads are going to be key to being built first so that they're actually bringing the, correcting the traffic situation and the construction traffic can then come on the proper roads. So I get that they will be the first thing, but all these things need considering because we don't want them to put a road through a field that would have been best for the park and ride scenario. So yeah, all consideration. Sorry, that you were saying. Are you considering moving the fire station? Because you mentioned that's within the plan. It has been mentioned as a possibility, yeah, um, because it does free up um, a reasonable amount of space, actually, doesn't it? Um, and, and this is why they've engaged with the architect that they've chosen, which um, one of the slides does tell us which architect firm has been chosen, doesn't it? So it's, it's Macmullen um, architect firm that have basically been, uh, that's leading the strategy. So Andrew Macmullen is one of the directors there. Um, forgive me it didn't mean anything to me because it wasn't Bowman Riley 
Um, but as I was supposed to go, ooh. <laughs> uh, but they have a very good pedigree, and uh, I trust the people who've told me that. So, yeah. Oh, sorry, love. Yeah. I don't know if it's appropriate or not. Oh, go for it. Road safety. Yes. Between the Roman Swanton Street busy business to my shop, it's torrential to get across. Yes. Uh, you do take your life in your hands over Belmont exactly. Bridge, don't yeah, you? I see there being a, an accident in the there because the amount of people that try to run across and they don't see the car from here. Yeah, because it really is a blind spot when you're on this side, isn't it, looking well, over? Would there be a possibility of a zebra there? At this stage, nothing's impossible. Everything is possible because we're, we're getting in at the very early stages. Yeah. So you've got the traffic lights further down from the post office, but most people won't all the way down there to cross over. They don't have the foresight to think, and, and even if you bother to go up and over Belmont Bridge before you actually cross, then you've still got the traffic coming from the T-junction point of view, and it's coming at you from three directions then, isn't it? Yeah, so it's not good. I mean, you've got the little um, zebra crossing just outside Craven District Council, haven't you? Yeah. So again, but, but again, if people, that's quite a distance. Yes, yeah, we do tend to be a little bit lazy, and we cross where we think it's convenient, and we don't necessarily cross where it's safe to cross, do we? People I've seen nearly hit or quickly yeah. have to jump back with young children and animals and absolutely yeah it happens all it's countdown before there is and it's a miracle there hasn't been i agree louise absolutely yeah so join us at those meetings and i will remember all of this anyway because we're getting notes on it <laughs> uh, to be able to put forward initial sort of concerns raised is there any thoughts about you know uh, infrastructure for more cyclists to commute into school <gasps> now it's interesting you should say that dave yeah, there's no, there no shower facilities for cyclists. Yes, yes. And two things have been raised with me about cyclists. Um, and this is where some of, again, I, I won't steal cast thunder, but where some of the um, easier infrastructure to fix is actually coming in. Um, somebody pointed out that there isn't places for cyclists to park. Um, and I was a little bit like stunned that we market ourselves as a place that does all these fantastic cycle routes around the dales um, yet we don't have places <laughs> where you can put your wow one step further if you can find it because they're not easy to find either uh, and from a sustainable point of view, which is Ivan's speech, those are exactly the types of things. So what we've got today for you is a bit of duck tailing. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's huge travel. That's huge travel. And the Leeds Enterprise Partnership, which is based in Leeds, obviously Leeds, Learning Enterprise Partnership based in Leeds, sorry. Uh, they also cover Craven area. Um, and they are offering funding at the moment for sustainable alterations. Uh, British Cycling is offering some funding for cycle things. These are things that we're actually looking at at the moment, things that we've had pointed out to us um, while we've been, I wouldn't say quiet during COVID-19 because it's been a bit manic. We're sort of helping react to people applying for things, but um, they've certainly been pointed out. Some of the things, I mean, the guy who pointed out the cycling to us, we were like, no, of course you can park cycles in Skipton. We're a cycle town, for goodness sake. And no, that's just not true. Um, so these are things that we're looking at remedying. Um, not saying the priority things, but they're getting up the list. Because um, I'm looking at signage, for example, and it's there on re, you know, restructure. It's under, if you look at our business plan, attractiveness and cleanliness, it's there about the infrastructure of the town, the little things that the bid can perhaps assist with. Um, Kath very kindly showed us some great um, cycle stands that are quirky, that you can actually put in a car parking space, but 10 cycles can park in that car parking space. And so one of the things I'm looking at the moment is, can we have one of those where you can pick them up and put them down? So when we've got market stalls, the market stalls are there. But when we haven't got market stalls, maybe we can get a couple of those out on the high street. So 20 cars can park, the uh, cycles can park. So these are things that we've been considering. Yes, yes. Anybody else before we have a coffee break, which I'm sure you're all anxious for? No, well, you can come and chat to me during the coffee break, so long as we keep a metre apart.
To set the scene, I was responsible for the sustainable development goals, the introduction into Skipton and the setting of. So if I don't have the answers, um, I'll find them out for you. Um, that is currently done in an internal comms team in that area. So I'm just going to go through what are the sustainable development goals. I do abbreviate that to SDG, not STIs. Um, slightly different. Um, so I do abbreviate to Sustainable Development Goal to SDRG, so please, um, I will get an I in there a couple of times, uh, which I did with our board. Um, so these were introduced, I don't know if anyone remembered the Millennium Goals. Uh, they were around, obviously, over the Millennium. They were replaced in September uh, 2015. Uh, with the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN. Um, 193 world leaders signed up to these. There are 17 goals in total. Um, they're supported by a raft of underlying um, targets and uh, benchmarks. So there's, uh, I was looking at this morning, 169 targets and 232 indicators to date. Um, the UK has uh, already responded to the um, report. They have to do an annual report. They started last year in June, and they call it uh, the Voluntary National Review of Progress Towards SDGs. Um, their first one went last year, and according to them, the 74% um, we were working towards in terms of what we were doing. And this is by 2030 we want to develop these. So it is just basically a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable uh, future for all. There's a little video which is just going to sum up. I'm not going to go through every single um, SDG, SDG um, but by all means give me a shout and we go through it. But I'll go through a few things about how we implemented it in Skipton and how I would suggest you would do it if you were going to do it. But just go through what it is. We can be. We must be. The first generation to end extreme poverty. The generation most determined to fight injustice and inequalities. The generation that saves the planet from climate change. And this is how it will get done. The global goals. A 15-year plan for everyone, everywhere. With no one left behind. We, we will live in a world where nobody anywhere lives in extreme poverty. Where no one goes hungry. Where no one wakes in the morning asking if there will be food today. We will live in a world where no child has to die from diseases we know how to cure. And where proper health care is a lifelong right for us all. We will live in a world where everyone goes to school. And education gives us the knowledge and skills for a fulfilling life. We will live in a world where all girls and all women have equal opportunities to thrive and be powerful and safe. We cannot succeed if half the world is back. We will live in a world where all people can get clean water and proper toilets at home, at school, and at work. We will live in a world where there is sustainable energy for everyone, heat, light, and power for the whole planet without destroying the planet. We will live in a world where economies prosper. A new wealth leads to decent jobs for everyone. And we will live in a world where our industry our infrastructure and our best innovations are not just used to make money, but to all make all our, our lives better. We will live in a world where prejudices and extremes of inequality are defeated inside our countries and between different countries. Where people live in cities and communities that are safe, progressive, and support everyone who lives there. Where we replace what we consume. Planet where we put back what we take out of the earth. We live in a world that is decisively rolling back the threat of climate, climate change. change. Where we restore and protect the, the life in our, our oceans, oceans and seas. We <laughs> restore and protect life on land. The forests, animals, the earth itself. With peace between and inside countries. Where all governments are open. And answer to us for what they do at home and abroad. And the justice rules. With everyone equal before the law. Where all countries and we their people work together in partnerships of all kinds to make these global goals, goals a reality for everyone, everywhere. These are the United Nations global goals for sustainable development. Let's, Let's get, get to work. work. Let's make it happen. I love that video, and when I first uh, found Sustainable Development Goals, 
it was the one video I looked at, but it was also the one that confused me because it's quite big. It's how do you get your arms around sustainable development goals? And we spent a little time sort of looking at that, how that would work within Skipton. Because we were looking at some of our stuff around our environmental footprint, what it is. And to me, sustainable, sustainable development in my world was environmental footprint. So we started, we started looking at that environmental footprint and um, we, we also looked and engaged with our customers and you guys engage with your customers on a daily basis. Customers now expect us to have an environmental strategy. A lot of customers are starting to look at the sustainable development goals. They're out there, they're being marketed, they are asking these questions. According to the stats, and these are done by PwC, chartered accountancy firm, um, they were done a couple of years ago and they've been updated, they haven't actually changed. Um, and the UK has agreed to these, 90% of people want some sort of strategy in place. Over 70% of customers and colleagues are now choosing their suppliers and the places that they want to go and work at, looking at the sustainable development footprint that those companies are involved in. And you'll see a lot of 71% of UK companies are starting to get involved in sustainable development goals. I think that's quite a, in a high level bit in terms of some of the bigger companies. So Nestle, Skipton Building Society, I understand. But I want to get across to you, this is a very, this is what you already do. This is just putting a badge on what you guys do now and do well. And I'll go through how we got there in Skipton, because we didn't go and create this and spend a lot of money. We were doing what we did. So I'll, I'll just go through some of that footprint. We did hire an external company. We used um, a company called TBL Services. Um, but there's no problem. Um, so we used a TBL service. They came in. They weren't very expensive. And I made no mistake, I've pinched his slides. His name is, is Colin. And um, he went through this process with us. So what we really sat down was, how do we identify those goals that we, as a building society, were that bothered us. There's certain ones that we couldn't do nothing. So life below sea, there was nothing that I could do as Skipton Building Society to make that better or commit. I'll get into a little bit more detail. And then there was this whole thing around commitment. Now these have to be stretching. One of the big, uh, my proudest achievements was convincing my board to accept commitments that we would never achieve. We would never actually achieve some of our commitments and putting that down and having those in place is really important because we had to try. We can't sit back and wait. So that was one thing, put those commitments in. Then you have to measure those. You've got to put a lot of data behind. We have data scientists in our organization, but you don't need that. But you do need to put a lot of data behind it and you need, you need to communicate that to your, your, your colleagues, to your, your customers. They need to see what commitment you're making in that. So just to go back onto that identity bit, we sort of had a look at, we took a, a workshop and we plotted all of our um, the, the goals against how important it was to our business, which we put along that axis, and how important uh, our ability to contribute to that. And you'll notice, for example, like, and this isn't ours, by the way, I wasn't allowed to use, I don't work for Skipton anymore, so I'm not allowed to actually uh, use what we pull. But, but you'll notice, for example, life below sea is very low. We're in the middle of Yorkshire. It's unlikely that we would have. Maybe Busy Lizzie's might have a little bit more of a, an impact in that life below sea, and they would, that would be a little bit more, but that would be because it's important to their business from a sustainability point of view. But for Skipton Building Society, sustainable fish, not really a big issue for us. Um, so we would, this is how you would sort of plot it, where it is. And then you go, and then we would choose. And this is sort of an example output. Now, I have brought with me the one that we produced in Skipton, um, which is a fantastic little leaflet. It opens up into all sorts of little bits. Um, my apologies, he says, getting it. So it sort of opens up and then the commit. Now, you might commit to one goal. You might commit to 20 goals. Um, you can't because there's only 17, but you might commit to a lot more than what we did. So we decided four was the right number for us and we'd already been doing these. So we had a massive customer proposition expected for a building society, that's a financial institution. 
So we rebadged that into one of our sustainable goals, which was sustainable cities. So we put it into that whole bit. We had this whole thing about community. We give our colleagues two days a year to go and do volunteering. We are a very big charitable organization in terms of, um, you know, we were talking about car parking earlier. The society does rent its car parking out on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, that All that money in, that it, it produces, which is about 20,000 pounds a year, goes into charity. All that uh, that is part. So we put that all under sort of a decent place to work. And then we had this whole thing around um, uh, strong institutions, which we thought was because we were a mutual, we were in there. But I will be honest, we, we battled around that thing about poverty. Um, and that came up in the top of our, um, in the top right hand corner of, of our graph that we did. But as a financial institution, I always felt it was a little odd that a financial institution wanted to, a capitalist financial institution, wanted to sort of look at poverty. But we did, we took it to the board, and we, we ended up not putting that one in. So, but we are doing things for poverty. So I don't want you to think that we haven't. So, for example, the society has said it will put 3,000 people in 20, by 2022 into homes that are currently homeless. So that is the poverty angle, and it's doing that as part of its charitable contribution. And you will find that you will be doing little things. I can see the rendezvous, for example, might want to bring, they might not look at sustainable life under the sea as a, as a goal that they want to focus on, but they might bring in some sustainable fish into their restaurants, and then they can plug that. So you will still chip away. And when you look at our CSR report, or now we've rebadged sustainable report, we talk about those things that we're doing. So our restaurants that we were doing, it's all fair trade. We've been challenged at our AGMs for years around fair trade, and I'm assuming your customers will as well. So we get challenged all the time. So we're putting those in place, but we, we chose. But the one that I'm more passionate about, and the one I was accountable for, um, is this um, consumption and production. So my whole bit was around the environment. I wanted, we came up with a strap line that we would put, take out less than what we, so we would put more into the environment that we take out. So we were going to halve our carbon reduction commitment. We've put in, we were the first people in Skipton to put in electric car chargers. We were the first to put electric cars on our fleet in a financial institution point of view. Um, we gave our colleagues um, loans in terms of financial institution bits around that. We did solar, we did water. Um, we also um, started from a commuting point of view, calculating our carbon footprint. So our colleagues travel far and wide. Someone's already said that most people actually drive into Skipton. Our colleagues are no different. And anyone that lives in Skipton, I was responsible for parking. Um, but you would know that that is a massive problem. So we were trying to incentivize that. And we were incentivized putting some stuff to reduce that. And we put that into our carbon calculation. And I think that's really important. It needs to be stretching. And by the way, that was one we never thought we'd ever meet. Um, but we would try. So what we did at the end of that is we, because we had the, the, the cash flow, is whatever we could not reduce carbon on, we planted trees. So we did a link up with the uh, northern forest and we were planting to the tune of 60,000 trees a year. Um, we then have to commercialize it. So for me, this is easy to throw money at something, and as the building society who has a little bit of spare cash, it's easy to throw money. But I want to get across to you that this isn't you throwing cash at it. You already do this. It's how you throw away shoe boxes, um, how you, um, you know, you buy sustainable fish. Um, just those little things that you have to do and put your badge on it. This is not throwing heaps of cash, and we never did throw heaps of cash at this. I actually saved money in the long run for the society by bringing it under the sustainable development goals rather than the corporate social responsibility angle. And at the end of the bit, this is one of the things, and again, one of my proudest achievements, but we actually produced this uh, last year, which produced, uh, gave all of our facts and figures for our investors. And the other thing is to commercialize it I introduced green bonds into the society. So for those of you who don't know, we're a mortgage, we have to get money somewhere, so we were selling some assets, which is our mortgages, and we were producing bonds off the back of that, and we were doing and looking in the green bond space. So again, very innovative for something for, uh, for the likes of Skipton Building Society. And they are punching above their weight at the moment in terms of the mortgage market. So I just want to wrap up with one final thing is there's a lot of support out there and there's a lot of free support out there. Um, the UN has its own website around sustainable development goals. It's not a scary monster. Um, you can phone me anytime, contact me. I, my email address and everything sits on the website. You're more than welcome to ask me any questions. But we use TBL and we helped set up this website um, uh, that Colin set up for TBL, which is support the goals. There is a small charge um, that they are now charging um, 
but one of the things that I always found that we had to do is we were operating with almost 1,300 suppliers. It became very difficult for us to have a sustainable development strategy, particularly in the environmental space, if we weren't looking at our suppliers and how those suppliers were helping us do. You do that currently now, for example, in um, minimum wage regulations. So your suppliers also have to have minimum wage in place. So you're doing that already. So we, TBL, for that 30 pounds a month, um, they will look at your suppliers. You can send them all your suppliers and they will look at them and they will rate them in terms of how those suppliers meet the goals. Um, and that helps with that communication that I was talking about. For me, communicating sustainable development goals is the most important thing because we're going to be chased from the millennials coming up and you know us old folks that are sitting on the other side and people that we're focusing on our businesses we're not focusing on the broader bit and trying to get your arms around what environment means is, is, is quite a difficult thing to do particularly running your business at the same time and you need to start pushing those things through so have a chat to them give them a shout there's a lot of stuff on there i was on there this morning um, there's companies that ranging from fish, fish shops that sitting on the high street all the way to multinationals, Nestle, for example, where they provide some of the stuff that they have been doing um, and some of the stuff that they've actually been implementing along the line. So it's really valuable. I'm not going to keep you any further. I think to say I'm a bit of an eco warrior. He says driving a Tiguan diesel vehicle, but it can't all be right. Um, but I am a bit of an eco warrior and I think it's important that we take these up and that we implement these within your businesses. And if I could make Skipton the first sustainable development town, um, that would be fantastic. And this is something that Geraldine and I are going to really push and work on. And Craven is looking at this and Skipton Town is looking at this. Um, they're not as far as we would like them to be, but there is something on the pad for them to start looking um, at some uh, about these. And there's a lot of partnerships going on from, for example, the Northern Forest um, to some of the um, businesses coming out of Leeds around uh, 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 electric bikes. I do know about them. They provide funding for that. I have one. Um, that, and so we need to start thinking about these and we will start putting these onto the website. It'll become a resource that we put there that you can help. But if there's anything you want to know, I'll help you as far as I can. Colin is phenomenal. He does this as his bread and butter. Um, I'm, I'm in West Yorkshire, so I'm not supposed to be uh, uh, spending time inside uh, a room with other people. Um, so uh, uh, thanks, thanks for uh, agreeing to hear me via Zoom. Uh, I hope it's been interesting so far. Uh, my, my name's Rob Atkins. I've worked for Craven Council for about two years. Uh, I originally came to Craven to, uh, to work on a load of back office stuff like uh, improving performance management and procurement and that sort of thing. But in, uh, in August 2019, uh, the council has unanimously declared a, a climate emergency. Uh, with the requirement that, ca that officers should present a plan describing how we might achieve that, um, uh, that being uh, working towards becoming carbon neutral by 2030 within six months. So at the end of February 2020, we presented a, a, a plan which was agreed again unanimously by councillors and this presentation is a summary of that plan. So I'm, I'm going to go through very briefly everything that's in the plan and uh, at the, the end you'll have the opportunity to ask some questions if you'd like to. So this is uh, some research from Leeds University showing uh, where we'll be if we don't make any changes to the way that we're doing things. So at the moment we're somewhere around 400 uh, kilotons of uh, carbon dioxide a year across the district uh, and uh, if we keep going the way that we're going at the moment there'll be some improvement but uh, only by about 20%, which is, is nowhere near the, the commitment nationally that we need to be making to the Paris Agreement. Um, and internationally, if, if, we, if we're on that sort of trajectory, all sorts of terrible things will happen. So um, that's, that's not ideally where we'll be. This is uh, also from Leeds University, a piece of work they did for us, um, looking at what we would need to achieve uh, if we are going to meet the Paris Agreement targets and the government's commitment to uh, become carbon neutral by 2050. So. That's where we're heading. That's where we need to be heading. Now, um, our councils have committed to work towards becoming carbon neutral across the district, district by 2030. Um, obviously, that they don't have direct 
um, influence over everything that happens in the district. So it's, it's not entirely possible for them to commit to uh, doing all of that. Most of that will be in partnership. But there, there are two real uh, different pieces of work with different character, I think, to achieving this. One of which is the council's own emissions. So the emissions that we're creating as part of our operations through things like waste collection and running the swimming pool and that, that sort of thing. Um, where we, we do have a plan for becoming carbon neutral by 2030 for that. Um, and, and then the remainder of it, the other 98.5% uh, of the carbon emissions across the district, uh, we will need to work together to achieve. This is uh, the trajectory that we're heading for with Craven District's own emissions. Um, so we, we, this, this is what our plan looks like at the moment. And these are the things that we uh, are, are looking to, uh, I haven't separated them into council things and district wide things in, in, in this presentation, but uh, I think you, you'll see that there are both in here. And the, the first thing is that we're going to be moving the council to renewable energy contracts. Um, the first one that we can move to is uh, our gas contract is up next year. And we're looking at whether we can uh, move sub supply for some of the buildings onto uh, a, a renewable gas contract. So, so uh, um, paying suppliers of biogas for the uh, gas supply rather than uh, buying it directly from the grid. Our electricity contract's up in 2023. Um, so we, we're looking at reducing the council's energy use across buildings. We are, we're going to be investing in a building's energy management system, providing our bid for the European structural uh, fund money is successful. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, we've been replacing the council's lighting with LED lighting for some time. We're more than halfway through our rolling replacement program for that. That's both uh, street lighting and internal lighting. And we only buy um, high efficiency energy appliances uh, when we replace anything that we're using across the council. Uh, we're reviewing insulation across our buildings at the moment, um, including making sure that the new builds that we're uh, putting in, in particular things like engine shed lane, have high um, uh, quality insulation where they possibly can. And one big thing that we're doing is that we have uh, it approved a policy committee earlier this month. Um, we're going to go ahead with a, a matched funded bid to the European Structural Investment Fund uh, for installing renewable energy generation across the council's estate. Uh, that, that's things like solar panels and uh, uh, heat pumps. And once we've installed that, it will provide almost a third of the council's energy requirement. Uh, in, it includes uh, uh, district heating for the Great Horse Close Estate as well in, in partnership with Yorkshire Housing. Uh, so that, that's a fairly uh, major program. It's £1.2 million pounds worth of improvements in total. Uh, but we, we believe that it will pay for itself over roughly seven years. Uh, that includes the building's energy management system as well. Uh, we ran a competition to uh, uh, design a, a near carbon neutral house that's uh, suitable for the planning requirements of the Yorkshire Dales National Park. Uh, so we have a suitable design for that. We're currently looking for a suitable place to build it. Uh, the, the place that we originally intended to build it, I think will probably work out too expensive. So um, we, that, that's where we are with that one at the moment. Uh, we, we're looking at enforcing the highest possible um, standards of planning for energy use in new buildings. We're obviously slightly limited what, with what we can do with that because the, we're uh, obliged to comply with national standards for planning, uh, which uh, are, are somewhat uh, lower than the carbon neutral that we'd like to aim for for our own buildings at the moment. Uh, there are lots of planned changes in planning legislation coming up. Uh, difficult to know at the moment how that will impact on uh, what we can or can't do there. Uh, we're supporting people across Craven to develop renewable energy. We have a master's placement student at the moment who's working with uh, folk in Mallendale looking at what the op op options might be for improving renewable energy use there, uh, but also putting together a framework that could be used for assessing renewable energy opportunities in other areas if, if uh, folk would like to look at that. Uh, and we already provide uh, warm homes advice uh, and funding for particularly low income households to improve their standards of uh, particularly uh, insulation, but also uh, renewable energy generation uh, as a, a micro level uh, where they can. And we, we support the close the door campaign, which I'm sure some folk will be aware of already. I know Councillor Myers is very keen on that um, to make sure that we're uh, 
particularly using uh, energy efficiently in, in uh, retail settings. There's a whole load of work across development. Um, we we develop, develop some sites in partnership with Barnfield um, Construction. Um, what we're looking to do with those is to present options to councils which include uh, low and zero carbon options uh, so that they can make decisions about whether or not it's going to be a cost effective and uh, efficient thing to do to invest on each uh, scheme. Uh, we also have uh, sort of some development uh, work of our, that we commissioned directly ourselves and we're going to take the same sort of approach with that where we, we, we're going to look to build as close as possible to carbon neutral wherever we can but it will depend on whether or not it's actually going to be economically viable to do that whilst maintaining a uh, the, the pace on building new affordable housing for the area, which is obviously another key pressure. Our, our economic development team do work uh, as close as they can with developers to try and make sure that there are improvements in, in uh, housing schemes locally, uh, that there may be some limits to how much they're able to do with that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, you'll have seen that we've uh, installed the first two uh, EV charging points in the High Street car park. Uh, the plan for that is that we're going to run those for six months with uh, Angie, who have funded the installation. Uh, and if that's successful, then we look at where else we might be able to install those. We're also going to be reviewing uh, other installations across the district to make sure we have a comprehensive network. Uh, and we're going to be um, asking developers to look at including charging points and new developments. We're working with North Yorkshire County Council to look at uh, walk the walking and cycling infrastructure. Obviously, we, we did work with the uh, Canals and Rivers Trust to uh, upgrade the canal towpath. Uh, so that's a, a, a much improved and accessible route for uh, walking and uh, cycling between uh, Gargrave and uh, Kilwick. And we're going to support our uh, colleagues in the council to move to uh, low emissions vehicles. And uh, you, you may have heard already, I'm not sure who's been uh, speaking already uh, about some of our plans for uh, working towards a, a, a better um, access route into, into Skipton for folk who aren't using cars by improving the station area and, and the bus station. Uh, we, we are working with uh, the County Council to make sure that we're uh, improving uh, or aiming to improve uh, uh, public transport across the region. Now the, the uh, COVID-19 outbreak has given us an, uh, an opportunity already to uh, improve the way in which uh, we incentivize staff uh, to travel, to use active travel. So we, we've already changed our uh, staff car parking structure so that staff get a, a discount if they are traveling into the office by car on fewer days. Uh, we, we've said that we'll promote car sharing and car clubs. That one's slightly on hold at the moment. Uh, and we've also th said that we'll incentivize low emissions taxis. This is probably through some sort of uh, uh, incentive for uh, the, the first uh, taxi owners who want to take up a, a, a low emissions license to have some sort of discount um, for the first certain number of licenses or, or something like that. So that we're, we're, we're encouraging the, the uh, early starters to uh, um, take up that route. We've already started replacing our fleet where we can with electric vehicles. This is a Nissan ANV 200 and we've uh, replaced our maintenance uh, team van with one of these. Uh, we'll be looking to replace more vehicles with electric vehicles as they're taken out of service, um, but not the big refuse collection ones, which I'll come on to in a little bit, in fact here. So with, with uh, large refuse collection vehicles, we're aiming to reduce the fuel use rather than replace them with electric ones. So there, there aren't currently electric vehicles on the market that would cover the distance that we need and they're tremendously expensive. So we're, we'll be replacing uh, compo uh, hydraulic and pneumatic components with electronic ones that run from the battery. Uh, and buying some smaller compaction vehicles. I think we have currently three planned for next year uh, that will um, have much better fuel economy, as well as uh, re-optimizing our, our routes so that we're uh, burning less fuel. Uh, we're keen to have uh, some sort of anaerobic digestion facility in the district. Uh, we did commission a report on this, which uh, stated that this would probably only be viable uh, on a large scale if uh, food waste collection is mandated, which it may be at some point. Um, so, so we'll probably reconsider that if that becomes a requirement. Uh, the, the other option is, is for us to uh, work with smaller uh, groups of farms, for example, to produce uh, 
uh, electricity and, and heat from, from uh, the, the waste from groups of uh, businesses. We're doing some work with our own staff to increase recycling and we will be producing more uh, useful information that people can uh, share and use about recycling more generally. Uh, we're also working with the local enterprise partnership uh, to promote their uh, notion of uh, circular economy uh, across the, the district. We're doing a fair bit of tree planting. We've, we planted 9,000 trees across our estate um, last year, which is a, a tiny fraction of what we really need to. Um, we're working with the Environment Agency who are, are working on a much, much larger scheme to, to plant roughly 1.2 million trees uh, across the uh, district. Um, we have worked, we've, we've supported the DNA Biodiversity Scheme, which is particularly about bringing salmon back up the river air, uh, amongst other things, and uh, supporting, for example, the, the Yorkshire Peak Partnership. Uh, we would like uh, to start a woodland memorial site um, with, for our bereavement services. Um, we're reviewing possible sites for that development at the moment. Uh, we, we're committed, we have committed to promoting native species, although I'm, I don't think we've actually probably worked out what that means quite in practice yet. So the, there's still some detail to be filled in on some of this, as you may have noticed. Uh, we're, we're committed to stopping using plastics, and we've hugely reduced the use of single use plastics across the council over the past few years. Um, and we, we'll do what we can to support others to uh, do. Final one is a, a, just a bit of uh, uh, how we go about our own business. So when we're doing procurement, we're going to be asking questions in our procurement process about how partners are working to reduce their own carbon footprints. At the moment, that's not a scored question. So um, we, we, we're just asking people for our information so that we can promote that together with them. At some point, it will become part of scoring, but only I think once uh, local businesses have had a chance to come to speed with, um, or they may be already, you may tell me, but uh, a chance to get up to speed with uh, uh, what it, what it is that we need to do to become carbon neutral by 2030. Uh, we're looking at how we use our own money, whether there are things that we can do with our investments uh, that would be um, uh, a, a better uh, use of those to move towards carbon neutral. Uh, we've, we've, we've said that we'll work with, uh, with Skipton Town Council to uh, uh, meet the UN Sustainable Development Goals that they choose. Uh, I, I know that there was an aspiration there to, to become Britain's first sustainable development town, so uh, we'll, we'll do what we can to support that. Um, we've, we've said that we'll support local partnerships. There is a partnership group already that we've set up called the, uh, the Craven Climate Action Group. And if, if folk would like to be involved with that, please do let me know and I'll uh, forward any details. Um, we, we were intending to have an events program, which has been uh, somewhat put on, on hold um, due to our capacity and the, the challenge of, of putting on events at the moment. Uh, but we, we will pick that up at some point over the next year or so. So finally, um, we do have an adaptation strategy as well. I think there's some acknowledgement that even with all the action that we may take, uh, locally and regionally and nationally and internationally, there's likely to be some sort of change to, uh, continuing change to the climate and to our weather patterns um, that mean that we need, need to think about things like the increased risk of, risk of flooding, um, how we safeguard food production, that sort of stuff. So th there is a strategy there which um, supports that. And that's all. I, we, we've, we're monitoring this through our, our performance management um, system and we'll be providing an annual update to council Actually, we, we are providing a, a brief six monthly progress update as well, which will be going next month. Um, but there'll be an opportunity to review the plan uh, fully uh, once a year. So if there are things that we think are not the right things or things have changed, then we can, uh, we can adapt what we're doing and, and make sure that the plan fits. Thanks, uh, any questions will be great. Anybody that can sustain a No, that's great, Rob, thank you. Lovely. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers for joining us. Thanks. Bye. Um, while we've done the sustainability, just before I sit down, everybody, is um, there's opportunities here. There's some there's some funding opportunities. Um, the local enterprise partnership are offering um, grants uh, for businesses who are considering altering like how your water comes in and out of your premises. Uh, so there are things that you can do which effectively tick the sustainability box 
but do also save you money in running costs. So obviously businesses, if you don't actually own your premises, then you need to work in conjunction with your landlords. But if it's actually going to help reduce costs so you can afford to pay your rent, one assumes that's self-fulfilling. Um, and that's just, that's just one of the grants that I've noticed. Um, so there are opportunities here to get your business on the map. The bid is very keen to look at helping the two councils, well, the three councils we've got, the district, the town, and the, the county, uh, to actually bring Skipton. There isn't a town that's gone sustainable yet that isn't marketing the businesses that are doing something sustainable. We're always looking for ways of encouraging that other footfall, the, the footfall that has customers visiting us to stay a little bit, to have money in their purse to spend in our premises, whether that's having an enjoyment in a cafe, whether that's purchasing some retail goods, whether it's enjoying a cruise, whatever it is that they've come here for. Um, these, there are a lot of people up and down this country that are caring about the environment, and I just think it's a potential opportunity here for us to get on board with. That's ultimately the message as to why we've sort of educated you that this movement is afoot. Um, and you're probably doing the tiny things already, but you're just not telling people you're doing them. So if you are, then by goodness sake, get in touch with us and we'll see what we can do to help sort of market that. Hello everyone, thank you for having me this afternoon. It wasn't the plan, but here I am with Deborah's hat on and uh, David Smurthwaite's hat on. So I'll do my best to give you an overview of the Heritage Action Zone for Skipton. Um, so Debbie Cross um, is the HAS Programme Manager and I'm a HAS Project Delivery Officer and we were both appointed around June time. Um, so we haven't been in post for very long, so um, bear with us, but we're, we're completely on board with what the project aims to do and we're really excited about it. So um, we're looking forward to working with you all um, as we deliver it over the next four years. So um, I'm sorry about the map, it's not very clear, but um, the red line there gives you an indication of what the Heritage Action Zone looks like in Skipton and extends from Otley Street on the right over to the Canal Basin and then obviously from the bottom of the high street up to the top, including um, the castle and, and beyond. Um, and the definition of the heritage action zone, so it comes from historic England, and it's, as you can see, it's about breathing new life into an old place and making it a heritage action zone. So um, that's what we're aiming to do. And um, the, the goal is to stimulate economic activity within the heritage action zone um, by using the, and, by recognising and using the heritage value that that's, that town offers. So we know that Skipton's got a lot to offer um, with its heritage and we want to utilise that to really um, stimulate um, economic activity within the town. So there are seven elements to this four-year programme. So this, um, in terms of a starting point, um, this, this uh, presentation continues from the announcement that I think you'll have heard via Skipton Bid newsletter and through the Craven Herald, which was that the, the um, 1.2 million funding from the government from um, Historic England was secured last September, I think it was. Um, and then the details started to come through and I, I think I saw it again in the press in January um, in terms of how that was going to start to look for Skipton um, and then now we're getting more into the detail of it. Um, I'm not going to be talking about figures particularly because um, there are lots of elements within it and I'm only dealing with a bit of it um, but the overall package is 1.2 million. A lot of that is going into Skipton Town Hall um, and which is ongoing anyway so I'm not going to talk a lot about that. Um, and then there are some bits and pieces that I haven't kind of started yet. And there are more grants that become available as well. So Debbie is the programme manager. She's always looking to um, build on the funding that we've got already in order to keep the package growing, if you like. So we're always looking for more funding opportunities. But yeah, so they're the seven elements of the four-year programme. Let me move on to the next one. And in order to, to deliver those four, those seven uh, projects, um, we've got key st stakeholders that we are really keen to work with. Um, so Skipton Bid, obviously, and the Civic Society, uh, the Council, and so on. And, and more importantly, the business community, um, who we, we are really, really keen to work with. <coughs> but that's not, um, that's not the exhaustive list. There's, there's lots of people, for, exa for example, Skipton in Bloom, um, even volunteers, you know, the, the list goes on and on. But it's important to deliver in order to deliver this that we're completely engaged with the you know the wider community. 
So in order, so by working in partnership, we want to ensure that we effectively engage with the community to do effective consultation. We listen to what you want, what you think about our plans, and um, we listen to your feedback, and we, you know, we take those ideas on board in order to move the program forward. Um, and that those ideas then start to really shape the detail of the plans. And then, more importantly, that those plans fit within the wider vision for uh, Skipton, which we've heard about this afternoon. So the sustainability element of it, the um, Skipton Triangle, and so on. So these four elements of the programme, I'm not particularly involved in as such. I, I will have some influence in the cultural programme. Um, but those are some of the biggies that I'm not involved in. But the aim is for the Skipton Town Hall to create a cultural centre, including museum and performance venue, to transform the old community centre um, on Otley Street into an art house. Um, so that's very much at its starting point. Um, but it's, the potential is exciting in terms of creating a, a creative space for artists and performers. Um, and then developing a cultural program so that's drawing in lots and lots of different people with um you know create creatives artists performers digital artists if that's what they're called you know there's lots of scope for bringing all of that expertise in to develop new ways of ho hosting events and festivals for skipton and to celebrate the heritage as part of that and then the the fourth one the conservation and heritage program so there has uh, project gives an us an opportunity to review the listed building because I don't think it's been done since the 1970s. So um, this gives us the opportunity to review them and reassess whether any more should be added to the list. <coughs> so these next three ones are within my remit as the project officer. Um, so the aim for Coach Street is, is to extend and enhance Coach Street so it becomes more like the Canal Quarter. And the idea of the canal quarter came from the businesses because that's how you call this area already. So it makes sense to actually use that term um, and to define it as such. So it's not just Coach Street, but you know, we're trying to encourage people to come to the canal quarter because that sounds really exciting and see what's on offer at the canal quarter. And within that, really maximizing the heritage value there. So really understanding what we've got um, and promoting it, recognising it, and building even a brand about the whole heritage aspect of Skipton. Um, and then, as part of this work, to improve the accessibility and the road safety for all users. So that takes on board the cycling, pedestrians, uh, making it safe for all users, including buggy users, wheelchair users. Um, along Coke Street at the moment, it's not ideal, but it's a difficult space. But um, there's definitely something that could be done to make it more attractive and more, more appealing to all road users, not just cars and lorries uh, that go down it and pedestrians have to be squeezed on the pavement. Um, so the plan is, yes, to optimise economic opportunities for all the businesses and for new businesses if they're able um, to, to move to that area, increase the footfall and to extend the Coach Street um, design to include the ginnel so there's more of a flow from the high street towards the canal quarter um, and then using our valuable assets the victoria square which is lovely and hallam's yard and restore these areas so that pedestrians and shoppers and tourists and visitors will want to explore from the high street to the canal quarter and back again and, and around about as well and as part of that exploring to go and see what there is there so to go and see that there's um, slightly different markets um, being hosted, either at the Canal Basin or over at Otley Street or even on the High Street. So we're trying to encourage more um, young people to start trading. So young businesses, we want to nurture those young businesses to come to Skipton, but provide them with the good infrastructure to get started. So give them the Wi-Fi and the electricity supply that they need in order to, to start their um, stalls well in Skipton. So that's just a quick overview of it. Those are our um, emails, so please take a note of them. And if you have got any questions and if you'd like to be involved, if you're over at the Otley Street end, for example, that's not my remit at such, but Debbie and I will be really, really keen to hear from you um, to bring you on board with, with the HAS, because of, as I say, it does cover that area as well. So um, any ideas would be very welcome.
So if you have any questions, I would be happy to take them. When Sorry. You, when Well, no, it's about um, the cobbles are part of our heritage for that, so we want to use them in a, a better way. So it's um, maybe to relay them in a, in a better way or just maybe just to, to relay them so that the, the flags are situated so that you can walk along the flags but the cobbles are still there because it's quite treacherous for pedestrians around uh, Victoria Court. Yes, yeah. So, exactly. And, I mean, I... I I get that feeling as a pedestrian myself, but when I talk to the businesses, um, they will say, well, I don't think they'll come here because, you know, the, the access is bad, you know, the surfaces are poor. So, we, well, we need to try and fix that as part of this. I was quite surprised that you left Water Street out of your plan because it would create a circular walk round. Right. Most of the people down the Ginnels, which aren't really suitable, but they are very attractive. Yeah. certainly look at that yeah we can certainly look at that Terry it's not, we're not uh, being I mean that was that's within the house map isn't it Water Street no, you, the, the map on the line was uh, along the canal towpath ah right okay uh, not Water Street right okay this is no benefit to us being on Court Street but it cuts in and up and it cuts Water Street out okay I'll have a look at that yeah yeah so, but, I mean, I have to say, right, okay. Um, they would walk all the way around. Yeah. You know, Water Street doesn't get a lot of footfall at the minute. Right. It never has, um, and there's things on there, businesses, and some nice buildings. Yeah. Got register office and things. You know, it's um, it's a shame to cut it out. Yeah. It could be a useful. Addition. Well, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the corn mill's still in there, but it just, it, I find it odd it's just That's stepped out. You know. yeah. I'll have a look at that. I yeah. didn't draw that red line. No, I no, I've got to say. I don't know how that red line came about. Yeah, I see, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. There's, there's a circular walk around there, the high street. Millbridge, Wall Street, round, yeah. and then there's still places to link across. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the canal. I'll have a look at that. I was just going to ask one question. In terms of where are you publishing some of this sort of data and information that you've you know, told us now? Is, it, is there a website that you're putting this on? People can go and have a look at it. Not yet. We're not at that stage yet. But are you thinking of that? Yes, I think, yes, we are. Because as part of the community engagement, it needs to be accessible. So certainly... Um, what form that takes, I don't know yet, but uh, certainly because we're embracing the community, it needs to be accessible, yeah. Well, the, yes, the high streets opening and closing, um, I don't have the very latest information on, apart from that it's extending until the end of October. That's right, isn't it, Geraldine? So, um, yeah, where that... I mean, the whole idea of having something on the high street as an event is a good thing because it fits in with the aims of the HAS. Um, but it's the, the aim, from my point of view, is to, to encourage um, p shoppers tourists, whatever, to, to walk further than the high street and to bring in the secondary a areas, really. So there's no reason why we can't have an event at the Canal Basin rather than just on the high street. But it's slightly separate from the opening and closing of the high street as a, a longer-term plan. And, and just thinking about, you know, events where, obviously, people come to the town, uh, you've got the town hall, that's sort of a separate zone to yeah. the Canal Basin. 
and you've got the market and all the traffic and it's just you know we've got a sort of fracture that's caused by the amount of traffic that goes through for I don't know the feel and the usability of Skipton as a as a as a whole space. I'm, I'm an event organizer right. and, and um, that's that's just one of the things that, that's always there, it's always in the way. Mm. And, and I don't know, just the feel of the space talking about opening out different areas of the town in terms of the brand and plan. Um, having more green space within having more sitting space, mm. having more mm. where something can actually happen where groups can gather rather than we've got these narrow tiny tiny pavements, tiny tiny ginnels, that's all very lovely but it's sort of the gelling of the whole of it mm. is broken mm. I mean this if I, if I may can, yeah. sorry this is why uh, we've put so much on the agenda for today because you can start to see how it all starts to dovetail Mm -hmm. um, and if it's if it's pulled together, and the whole concept is that we want to pull it together. So when we're looking at the arts and cultural spaces that are needed, when we're looking at the Triangle Master Plan with the wonderful architects that are coming in to, to review all of that and how the travel and the infrastructure of the town in and out of the flow, um, I mean, I'm really keen and I've been sowing the seeds and um, I think my seeds are starting to sprout with the concept of uh, putting little bits of stalls on certain days by leaving the high street open perhaps and closing Coach Street on a Sunday and closing Otley Street on a Sunday um, so that you've actually got stalls that can go down there to bring different tastes, different crafters um, and therefore the traffic will flow when we won't get the congestion because the high street will still be open. Mm -hmm. But then we start to encourage people to meander and see the, the gems that we've got that make Skipton because whilst we've got a few little independents dotted on the high street, on the whole, our independents stay off the high street because of the, the cost of being on the high street. Um, and if our visitors found those little nooks and crannies um, where they can purchase unique items, then we're starting to create a whole cultural hub for Skipton anyway. Um, so it does all dovetail, and if we can get the triangle plan, understanding with the Has team that there's, there's this synergy, there's the work from the sustainability point of view, um, you know, when we purchase something, you know, I mean, I've been going to plastic free Skipton meetings for a good probably two years now um, and that's all very exciting but we have to make it work in a practical content um, just things like you know a um, great idea where somebody was going to build for us a big woolly sheet built out of um, some metal so you could drop your plastic in uh, but when it came down to the practicalities of the refuge collection we all know that if we've got a big woolly sheet that only wants plastic in reality mm -hmm. tins will go in there coffee cups will go in there. So we can only have that if somebody's prepared to go dumpster diving and sort it all out before it comes and gets collected. So it's just working together on all of this and dovetailing it so that these opportunities aren't missed. Um, and that's really why I've thrown so much at you today. So that anything you get involved in, if it's just one aspect that you think works for you because it suits your business, if you've got the others in your mind and we're constantly reminding you about them, then hopefully somebody in that meeting will just say the relevant thing that, that will keep it all pulling together.